Okay, so <clears throat> this week we'll start talking about regression. We're going to look at simple linear regression with one regressor. This is linear regression with one dependent variable y and one independent variable x and should look like slope intercept form from your algebra class. <clears throat> so simple linear regression will have one explanatory variable, which is another name for our independent variable. The goal of linear regression is to find a non-vertical line that best fits the data. If the line were vertical, then they have an undefined slope because all the points would have the exact same value for x, right? If the slope were zero, then we would know the two variables are not correlated because changes in x do not change the value of y. So we can use linear regression for two important concepts in statistics, prediction and inference. Our goal is to prove that changes in our independent variable is in fact changing the value of our dependent variable. And that's where the inference or causal inference, we want to find does x cause y? Prediction, on the other hand, we can use our regression model to predict other values not present in our data, possibly beyond the scope of our data, which has some limitations, or other values in the same scope of our data that we just don't have an, uh, a response or dependent y variable answer for. So, the simple linear regression model, model follows the slope-intercept form of a line. Y hat is our dependent variable, such as the growth rate of real GDP. The variable x is our independent variable, and an example could be the change in unemployment. B1, or beta 1, is the slope of our regression line and is the coefficient to our x value. The intercept is the b0 value and tells us the expected value of y when x equals 0. A real-world interpretation of the intercept can be seen in Kuhn's law, which demonstrates the relationship between the change in unemployment rate and the growth rate of real GDP. In a simple linear regression model, the regression slope, the value of B1, indicates how many units Y increases given a one unit increase in X. Thus, B1 represents the change in X divided by the change in Y. The slope of the regression line is an indicator of the relationship between the dependent variable and the independent variable and tells us the economic importance implied by that slope coefficient, B1. Changing the units of measurement, however, will not change how we interpret the effect of X. X is a change in Y. And this formula here, beta, zero, which is the intercept, plus beta one, which is our slope, times x, represents the population regression function. Good to remember for your homework. So there are mainly two kinds of quantitative variables we can work with, discrete and continuous. Discrete variables are countable in finite values like integer values or whole number values. Now there's a special case called a binary variable, which can only take on two values, zero or one. We'll come back to this when we start looking at logistic regression and dummy variables, but for now, just keep this definition in mind. On the other hand, continuous variables can take on any value between whole numbers so this would include any decimal value numbers. Our goal with linear regression is to estimate the relationship between two variables 
And we we're going to use something called ordinary least squares in order to do that. So ordinary least squares estimates the regression equation by taking some of the values of x from the mean of x and the values of y from the mean value of y. Uh, you multiply those together. This is actually the covariance divided by the difference in the value of x from its average squared, which is actually the variance. So what you see here is to get this intercept value, we divide covariance between our two variables, x and y, divided by the variance of our x variable or our independent variable. And that's how we can get an estimate of our beta 1 or the slope of our regression line. Once we find that, we can get the intercept beta 0 by subtracting the average of y minus our beta 1 times our average of our variable x. And that's how we get the intercept. So what ordinary least squares regression actually does is to minimize the squared error of the distance between our regression line and sample points. So we have this function here. It's a minimization function of all of the points in our data and the distance they are from this line. And our goal is to minimize that squared distance. We want to square it, of course, because otherwise we would have negative values below that line canceling out the positive values above that line. So that's why it's squared. And because it comes to ordinary least squares, because we want to find the smallest square distance from that line. So you can see an example here. We have a regression line, this blue line, expressing the relationship between test scores and student to teacher ratio. So the score that a student gets on this achieve test is our dependent variable, and our x variable or independent variable is the student to teacher ratio in those classes. So our goal was to find this line that minimizes the distance from the line to the point of each of these points. So usually you use a computer program to do this and it's going to adjust this line until it finds the best fit that minimizes all these distances. The OLS residuals are sample counterparts to the population errors. We'll come back to this when I talk about assumptions in the next video in this series. Another question is, if you look at this from a hypothesis testing standpoint, we want to test if the slope is equal to zero. Why? Because the null hypothesis saying H naught the slope b1 or beta1 equals 0 is saying that if that slope does equal 0, then these two variables are uncorrelated, thus having nothing to do with each other. And the alternative is, hypothesis would be that it does not equal 0, and there is some correlation between these variables, and we can use some variable x to help us understand changes in some variable y. But the null hypothesis assumes no variables are correlated to each other or have anything to do with each other. So that's why it's the null hypothesis. So let's look at a simple example. Let's say we have a set of data on used houses. We have a first variable, which is the square feet of the house. Second one is the number of bedrooms. Third one is the age of the house. 
And the fourth variable, which will be our Y or our dependent variable, is the selling price of that house. Now we're only looking at simple linear regression with one X and one Y. So we're going to look at square feet as our independent variable X and selling price as our dependent variable Y. We want to answer this question. How much should we sell a house for based on square footage of the home? So we're going to need to develop a linear regression model of the two variables so that we can predict a house's price based on square footage. So pull this data up in Excel. There's a few things we can do in Excel that you'll probably have to do on your homework. Um, let's say we want to find the median square footage. We can use a formula, median, for our square footage. So use the function median and the data for square feet. And that gives us the median. I enter another row on and put median. We can also find the mean, average, or expected value in Excel. That will be average. So we wanted to find the average value of, or let's say the average square feet the equals average, and we can select that data. I want to add the average um, selling price for homes less than 2,000 square feet. Why is this not popping up? Well, we could write a formula, but for now we're just going to do it really simple and do an average. And then we're going to select the selling prices that are less than 2000 And we can see that the average price is 66000 Now, if we wanted to look at what the average selling price was for greater than 2000 we would just pick up the rest of those values so it would be these because this is where the square footage is above 2,000. So the average selling price for a house greater than 2,000 square feet is 1,800. The next thing we can do is go to the data analysis tab here. And we can get descriptive statistics. Let's say we want descriptive statistics on our square footage. Well, actually, let's not write the whole thing. And then we can put labels in first. We can output square there. Do summary statistics. And do a confidence interval there. And that will calculate our mean, our average, say it's the same. Calculates our standard deviation, our median. You can see it's the same. There's no mode in this data. Calculates our standard deviation and our sample variance. You should remember that the standard deviation is the square root of the sample variance. It also calculates out our kurtosis, our skewness, the range, which is the distance between the max and min, our minimum value, our maximum value, sum, the number of samples that we ran the data on, as well as our 95% confidence level. So that is just how to use that analysis tab. But we still have not answered our question. How much should we sell a house for based on square footage of the home? We go back to our data analysis tab, and now we go down to regression. So 
So our dependent variable is the selling price of the house. And our in variable x is the square footage. Um, we're going to talk about the residuals and normal probability plots when we get to assumptions, but we'll come back to this in the next video. So Excel will calculate out all of our regression information. So it calculates out our intercept, which is also known as B0, calculates out our coefficient, which is our B1 value. So what it will do is create our slope intercept form would be the selling price is equal to our intercept 2300.46 plus our B1, which is 42.26 times our X value. So this gives us our Y equals B0 plus B1 times X. Now, when we create this, we have our coefficient. So we have our B1 value. That's important. Our intercept. But we also have our regression statistics up here. Particularly important is our R square, which tells the how much variation is explained in our variable Y by our variable X. So this tells us the goodness of fit for our regression. We also have our standard error, which is important. Um, So now we've created this regression formula. Now we can predict, let's say, how much do we sell a house for 2,000 square feet? So if we have 2,000 square feet, we can plug it into this formula. And it will tell us how much to sell that house for. So if we had 2,000 square feet, we should sell that house for $82,219.54. So that's how we can answer this question. All right. So there's still a lot more to talk about, um, explain more of the regression output, as well as the assumptions that are necessary to actually run this regression model. So we'll talk about that in the next video.